Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. This video is all about activities on Android and specifically single activity architecture versus using multiple activities in your project. A single activity architecture in the end just means that your whole Android app just has one single main activity in your code. That is nowadays the officially recommended approach from Google. In this video, I will give you my view on this. And at the end, I will then also share three scenarios in which you are not fine with a single activity, even in a Jetpack Compose project. And I can already say a single activity architecture is definitely a good thing. Because if we think back to the older days of Android development, then we only had activities in order to reflect what is being shown on a single screen. So lots of years ago, every single screen in our app had to have its own activity. And the thing with activities is that these are quite a quite heavy way to wrap a screen because an activity is not just meant to display UI, but an activity has a life cycle. An activity is kind of its own entry point, so where we can enter our app. An activity has to manage its own configuration changes, so when we rotate our device, when we switch the device theme, because activities are recreated, so destroyed and created again when such a configuration change happens. And because of all those complexities and issues, the Android team once came ahead and thought of a solution. And the solution is called fragments. That is at least what we typically stick to after the um, using one activity per screen approach, that we now had fragments which bundled specific reusable parts of our UI. And back then, only XML UI. And fragments then allowed that we could have multiple screens inside of a single activity. Because instead of having to navigate to a completely new activity, we could simply swap out the fragment that is being shown, the fragment, uh, the, the little UI piece, uh, the section of UI um, that is shown in an activity, we simply need to swap this out with a different fragment, with a different piece of UI in order to kind of perform a navigation. However, fragments still introduced a separate component. So a fragment was a separate component like an activity that had its own life cycle that was different than the one from the activity. And even though that solved a lot of problems, made our code more efficient, helped us to bundle related screens in a single activity, it still introduced some sort of extra complexity. And nowadays we can build UI with Jetpack Compose. That means we don't really need any fragments anymore since our Jetpack Compose UI for the entire project just needs a single entry part. And that single entry point is just a set content function in our activity. So when working with Jetpack Compose, then there is in most cases no real need to work with multiple activities since the workings of Jetpack Compose are actually very similar to how our fragments worked since just parts of our UI were swapped out with other parts of our UI. So screen A is being replaced with screen B without actually having to uh, cause a real transition from activity to activity or from fragment to fragment. But composables now don't really have that, that real life cycle anymore. They kind of have, so at some point they appear on the screen and at some point they maybe disappear from the screen again, but they don't have this life cycle with on start when, uh, when the um, activity or the, the component comes in the foreground, they don't have on pause, on stop and so on which activities and fragments had. So nowadays it makes a lot of sense to stick to the single activity architecture if you're using Jetpack Compose. A big reason for that is also that it reduces a lot of complexity in regards to managing the backstack because you, you only have a single entry point for your entire app. So just to clarify this concept of entry point again, if your app is closed, for example, and the app should be launched from a different app, for example, after clicking a button, then there needs to be some sort of entry point. There needs to be something that is launched from your app. And entry points on Android are just activities. Since a different component, when launching your app, has to specify a specific activity that is launched from your app, or if not specified, the entry point is by default the main activity. Because if you have multiple activities, every single activity can also possibly launch in different independent launch modes. So you maybe know these launch modes here when declaring activities in your manifest. And this is what I will come to at the end um, when it makes sense to use multiple activities. But we have these uh, launch modes like uh, here, launch mode, single top, single instance, single task, uh, which all um, just uh, dictate how the app uh, or how the specific activity behaves on the back stack. So all in all, that is really the uh, main advantage that I see in a single activity architecture. You just have to maintain a single task stack and you just have a single entry point for your app, which reduces the complexity by a lot. Also, you have to worry about a less lifecycle complexity because, of course, every single activity has its own lifecycle you possibly have to manage. But with a single activity architecture, everything happens in a single class. Then what was also always quite difficult or even impossible was to properly scope dependencies across multiple activities, but not across the whole app. So let's say you have three related screens, a login screen, a registration screen, and a forgot password screen. 
which are all kind of related to authentication. If all these screens are on, on separate activities and you needed to scope a certain dependency, like a, an auth repository, for example, that the same instance of that auth repository should be shared between all these activities, but not between all the other activities in the project, then that was really possible. So you had to make that a singleton that just lives as long as the whole application does. However, if you work with a single activity and fragments or a single activity and Jetpack Compose UI, then you can certainly scope dependencies uh, for a related set of screens. So either your activity just wraps related fragments, so um, an, a login fragment, a registration fragment, and then forget password fragment, then you can scope something to the activity, which allows you to share the dependency um, across all these fragments. Or if you're using Jetpack Compose UI, you can scope something to a navigation graph or to a nested navigation graph. So you could, you could bundle the three destinations, login, registration, for good password, in one nested navigation graph. And a nested navigation graph um, has its own backstack entry. And that means we can also scope dependencies to it. So I've really been applying a single activity architecture for the past probably two years. And I haven't really faced any major downsides of that. But as I said, there are still scenarios where it makes a lot of sense to work with a separate activity, even in the days of Jetpack Compose. And I want to go through three scenarios where this can make sense. And number one is PIP or picture-in-picture -picture mode. So picture-in-picture -picture mode is really just, when we launch this app, is really just that we get a little window of our activity that we can drag around our screen. So if we click on PIP activity, you can see um, that's a separate activity now. And if we enter PIP mode, then we get this pip activity as a picture in picture window but you can see at the same time we can see our other activity that we've launched before and this kind of behavior if you implement pip here only works if this um, this pip ui here is actually in a separate activity because otherwise the pip activity would also contain the um, this activity here at the previous backstack entry, and then you couldn't show both at the same time. So technically, yes, it's possible to implement picture-in-picture -picture mode with a single activity, but you may face downsides when it uh, when it will come to showing two parts of your UI at once. So maybe if you have a video calling app or so, and you want to show the remote person here in your pip activity but you still want to be able to somehow configure the call or so here in the um in the main bigger activity then this only works by making this pip activity a separate activity another scenario where it's not mandatory to use a separate activity but where it makes a lot of sense is when you want to um show that the user has to update the app so if you want to force an app update that's very often needed if for example your app works with a remote rest api and the um, schema of that api changes which only a certain version of your app actually supports, then your app would always crash since it would not support that schema if the users did not update to the latest version. So what you would need to do is you would need to also include some sort of field in your, um, I don't know, JSON schema that your app fetches whether your app needs to update. So what the, what the minimal supported version of your app is and if the actual version that your app is running on is um, less than this minimal supported version, then you could show something like this unsupported version activity. I like to make these uh, kinds of dialogues or these kinds of um, screens a separate activity since they are uh, completely separated from the, from the core part of our app. They're completely separate. And this just makes it easier to really only show this specific activity to instruct the user to update the app, to maybe include a link to Google Play or so. But this avoids the risk that uh, the user can accidentally maybe go back to a previous screen or so in that dialog. But you can see here it's really easy to um, finish this off. Let me see where implemented this unsupported version activity. Um, so this is really just a separate activity, a separate compose entry point. And if this is launched here or um, if we actually want to show this unsupported version activity, then it works like this. We just launch it via an intent and we finish off at this main activity. So this single finish line is needed to um, be 100% certain that the entire backstack is actually cleared here and the unsupported version activity is the only active ex uh, activity here on the backstack, assuming we only have these two activities, of course. And the last scenario that I want to go over when uh, a second activity makes sense is when you're working with widgets, the user needs to set up. So you can see, um, here we can't yet do this, but if we want to include a widget here on our home screen on um, widgets, that's actually already set up here in my sample app. Down here we have our app, and this is really just a simple <laughs> widget that displays a text on our um, home screen that we can set on our own. So if we click this, click on add, then this custom widget configuration activity is actually launched. In order for us to set up that widget, we can enter text that is being displayed on that widget, click add widget, 
and then we actually see this text here on our widget. And yes, we could also make this work somehow with um, our main activity, but again, then the, the whole backstack would already be contained in that single main activity. But in this case, we actually want to start the widget configuration activity in its own kind of task stack so that if we go back, we actually go back to our um, widget screen, to our home screen where we can set up that widget and not to the previous um, backstack entry of our main activity. So this is again something where a second activity can make a lot of sense. So with this video, I really just wanted to help you a little bit to not think too black and white about the single uh, single activity architecture that it does make a lot of sense in most scenarios but that there still are scenarios where a second activity can make a lot of sense if you actually say you want to work on your technical confidence be it to get a job in the first place be it to advance in your existing job from i don't know junior to senior to a lead developer be it you want to get ready to start your freelance career then why not apply to my 10-week Android mentorship program? I'll include a link down below. We will work together very closely. You get code reviews for all of your technical issues you currently don't even know about. So you can become the best uh, dev version of yourself over the course of 10 weeks. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.